Hello and welcome to Tal Capes, where we cover film, television, comics, and games. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? Today we are continuing our discussion of the 2002 comic book, Hush. Published by DC, written by Jeff Loeb, with art by Jim Lee, Scott Williams, and Alex Sinclair. Today we're discussing Batman issues number 611 through 613. But before we begin, a quick recap. Spoilers are ahead. Batman is being sabotaged from afar by a mysterious stalker. After fooling a kidnapping perpetrated by a mutated killer croc, Batman pursues a poison ivy-controlled Catwoman. During the pursuit, his bat rope is cut, causing Batman to fall into Crime Alley, where he sustained various injuries, including a fractured skull. Bruce Wayne's childhood friend, Dr. Thomas Elliott, was called in to perform Bruce's surgery. With the life of Bruce Wayne saved, Batman picks up the trail of Killer Croc, who was allowed to escape from Arkham in hopes he would lead Batman to the mastermind behind Croc's kidnapping plot. Croc arrives at Ivy's penthouse, only to find Catwoman. Ivy used Catwoman to steal the money and set her up to be killed by Croc. Batman intervenes, and with some interference by the FBI, Croc is captured. Catwoman informs Batman that Ivy is relocated to Metropolis, Part one of the story ends with Batman and Catwoman sharing a kiss. Part two of the story begins now in part four, The City. So, Todd, bring us into the story here. What's going on in number 611? So we pick up. Uh, Bruce Wayne is flying into Metropolis. Uh, we kind of get the notion that Bruce is a little distracted throughout this issue. Yeah, absolutely. Can't get his mind off of that kiss. Uh, Selena Kyle, Catwoman, you know, what is their relationship now? What's this mean? Some internal narration we get from Bruce as well. It's a very different from Gotham City, he says, about Metropolis. And for that alone, I tried to avoid coming here. There are not many reasons for Batman to be in the city, but no one will raise an eyebrow when Bruce Wayne comes to town. But as you say, we see Batman here in his own mind. He's telling himself to try to stay focused, not uh, not to think about it, not to think about Selena and the kids. But I would say throughout this issue, you kind of see how distracted kind of Bruce mm-hmm. has become. Uh, with the uh, the idea of maybe something brewing between him and Catwoman, what do you think of that concept overall? Like, how does it work for you within the story? Uh, uh, Bruce and Catwoman having a relationship, mm-hmm. or or well, his, the relationship, and also like, do you feel like it's? Do you feel like in the story does it make sense? Do you feel like you're okay with Batman kind of being distracted by by a woman, by Catwoman, even? I can probably, if any woman that he's had contact with over the years, I can see Catwoman being the one that maybe get in his head the most of any of them. Right. I, you know, I, I, I buy this, you know. Okay, fair enough. So we kind of pick up, uh, Bruce has arrived at the airport. We kind of alluded to before, there was a, he mentions a time that he actually wanted to be in Metropolis. We see a little flashback to him as a kid, but. Once we hit the airport, we run into Tommy Elliott is in Metropolis. <laughs> Imagine that. So, Imagine that. Again, Thomas Elliott was introduced uh, as a new character for this story. So his background is he's a childhood friend of Bruce Wayne. Um, at, when they were younger, we see in flashbacks in previous issues that um, one night Tommy's parents kind of went out for a drive. They wanted to kind of be alone. Their chauffeur didn't go with them. Something happened along the way, uh, and they had an accident. Tommy's father... Passed, passed yeah. away, and his mother was saved by the efforts of uh, Dr. Thomas Wayne, father of Bruce Wayne. But uh, ever since then, uh, kind of uh, he's kind of been, I guess, another ward for the Wayne family. They've kind of stepped up and kind of taken care of him a little bit. And right. We see he's kind of uh, in the flashback. He was along with uh, Bruce uh, and Alfred and Thomas on a trip that Thomas had to Metropolis. Yeah, they kind of flash back to the, you know, the, kind of the kids are outside, and, you know, they uh, Thomas tells them, you know, you boys stay right here. I got to go into this meeting. Stay uh, they, right here. Stay right here. Don't move. Don't go nowhere. And they kind of look up, and who do they see flying overhead? Why, well, it's the old uh, Golden Age Green Lantern. And this would be uh, what Alan Scott Alan said. Scott. Uh, yeah, so uh, we see Alan Scott kind of flying through the city. They're, of course, they're kind of mesmerized by that, um, talking about and kind of remarking about how we never – you never see anything uh, like this in Gotham City. So they're kind of, I guess, young boys and are kind of mesmerized. So they kind of take off to follow him, disobey Thomas's orders to stay right here. And they see him fighting who, died? The Icicle. The Icicle. Character I'm not familiar with. What An about old, you? old Golden Age villain. Yeah, I remember the Icicle. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so they, uh, they're they kind of watching them, uh, watching as Alan Scott kind of takes down the Icicle and kind of remarking about everything that's going down. Thomas, again, is uh, kind of putting that idea in Bruce's head that you always got to be one step ahead of your opponent. You have to right. learn to think about like your opponent uh, and those sorts of things as uh, Thomas Wayne kind of comes back out to kind of see the boys from there. He kind of reprimands him for leaving. Uh, he makes him spend the rest of the entire trip in the hotel. 
uh, they kind of comment, you know, that they spent the rest of it like looking out the window, hoping they'd see a superhero again, but they never did. <laughs> right. Uh, from there, uh, Bruce and Tommy kind of share a cab. Uh, you know, Bruce is heading over to uh, the Daily Planet. Uh, Tommy, I think, was in town for some kind of meeting, I think. Sure he was. Yeah. <laughs> sure he was, Todd. Sure. Don't sure get, I don't want to get too ahead of himself. But at this point, as, an, as, a, as a reader, an audience member, you're, you're still firmly planted in the notion that this, this new character introduced for this story has to be our main villain yeah. uh, of the story. So uh, that's why I kind of I, I like say that, uh, is Tommy really in, in town yeah. for, for a business meeting? It just so happens that he shows up here in Metropolis the same time that Bruce Wayne slash Batman does. Right. And they have a little back and forth in the car about Bruce not uh, kind of taking care of himself. Tommy wants him to kind of get some rest. He tells him he took a bone chip out of his brain. He should be resting. Uh, I like the, there's a panel there where Bruce kind of says, I take good care of myself, and it's kind of he's like he's kind of like shadowed. You see that kind of feathering around his face. Right. It's kind of like a I don't know I, I don't even know how to kind of really interpret it. It's just kind of like a I don't know like almost like a get off my back type feeling. Right. Like, but I just <laughs> I just love the framing of it. Um, and then uh, we kind of get the line uh, from Tommy that says, "You're not Superman," you know. Very like it reminds me very much of the line out of uh, Spider Man. Spider Man. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So uh, Batman and Catwoman have kind of a rooftop meetup. Uh, Batman gives her like a listening device. You know, he says, you know, if you run across Ivy, you know, call me. It's not his high school ring or anything. No, it's, you know, they're not, you know, it's steady or anything right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> she's like, you know, if I find Ivy first, you're going to have to wait your turn. So she's ready to lay into poison Ivy as soon as she runs across her. And on the next page here, I've heard, um, you know, kind of since we've been doing this series, I kind of wanted to go back and kind of see what other people had to say about this comic book series. Like, I've heard some criticisms, especially about some of the the blocking and panel work here, especially like on this panel, because you have like these this very long, narrow panel. You have like kind of the story panels, the three kind of like meteor parts of the panel here. Right. And another thin panel kind of giving our story is just basically it's just the, the idea of the panel is basically just to to, again, uh, Bruce uh, and it's kind of challenged by Tommy to another game of those antique uh, kind of game pieces, that war game that they were playing yeah. before as kids. We've seen them like kind of flashback to Tommy kind of creeps on Bruce's chauffeur, uh, chauffeur who's like a, kind of a, a very attractive looking woman. Yes. But my, my overall, what I'm trying to get to here is what do you think about the panel here? Do you have a problem with it? Do you, the layout, does it bother you at all? Like I just, I've just heard some criticisms of the panel work here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll be honest, when I was reading this, it, it didn't phase me one bit. I mean, I just, you know, it was just a panel layout, and I went on to the next page. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something – I mean, I think it's maybe a little bit different, but, I mean, I don't – you know, the criticism that it was hard to read, and for me, I mean, doesn't it, – it's not hard to read, in my opinion. I don't I don't mind it. I mean, maybe I'm not as um, kind of uh, bothered by kind of things right. like that as maybe some others are, but I'm absolutely kind of, you know, fine with it as far as paneling and stuff goes. So we see Bruce makes his way inside the Daily Planet uh... – Walks up and gives some roses to Miss Lois Lane. <laughs> yeah, I, and this is a very Superman one kind of throwback line, I think, because she, she's asking how many peas and therapists. Oh, yeah, definitely. And as Clark is telling her one, and she also kind of remarks that if you put a space in therapist, you get the rapist. <laughs> uh, not sure how that's uh, how that's uh, kind of factors in. But, yeah, we kind of get that very kind of Superman one kind of throwback references to the fact that Lois can't spell so good. <laughs> Yeah, now Bruce kind of takes a moment to, uh, he kind of uses Lois's computer. He's contacting Oracle back in Gotham. And it was some kind of, uh, it was a chemical, ethylene, I think it was. Ethylene, yep. That they were looking for uh, that could be manufactured in Metropolis. I think it's, uh, you know, made at LexCorp or in bulk at LexCorp, mm -hmm. which will come into play a little bit later as on, we're trying to trail down Poison Ivy. Exactly. Uh, and then uh, she's kind of, she's definitely flirting with Bruce here. Definitely. She kind of remarks later to Clark that, you know, she hopes she didn't uh, take the, fir the flirting too far. And he's like, you know, as long as you're the one uh, that I'm, that's coming home to me kind of thing. But yeah, right. she's definitely kind of flirting to, uh, uh, with Bruce Wayne to just kind of figure out why he's in Gotham City because it's unusual for him to make an appearance uh, out and about outside of Gotham City, I guess. We're also introduced to Perry White here. I like the, uh, the, uh, the notion from the Batman's narration that, He's too good a reporter not to figure out who Clark is. Yep, yep. Uh, and then he kind of kind of butts that up and kind of compares it to uh, how Jim Gordon, his relationship with Jim Gordon back in Gotham City. I just like the kind of that dynamic there and the kind of uh, kind of 
you know, contrasting those two kind of major characters for each uh, each each superhero character, like their uh, their kind of most trusted sources and things like that. So, I would, you know, if I was writing a Superman book, I would say, you know, most likely there's been quite a few people that's probably figured this out, but for the greater good, they keep it mouth shut. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> and just for some context here, this is a point in DC continuity when. Uh, Lois and Clark were together. I think they were married, and uh, she knew the secret. You know, mm-hmm. Clark had revealed that he was Superman to her, just in case people may have been wondering that we're picking this up for the first time and maybe they thought that was kind of a bit confusing. Yeah, so Superman knows who Batman he is. Batman right. knows who Superman he is. Lois Lane knows the Superman is. Clark can't, right. vice versa. She also knows that we see a little bit later on, she also knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Right. So another reason for her to flirt with her to uh, – to kind of figure out what Bruce Wayne is doing in Gotham to find out not only why Bruce Wayne is there, she's really trying to figure out why is, why is Batman, why is Batman yeah. here. Exactly. Yeah. So Batman picks back up on the lead to go to Lex Corp to track down that chemical. And another interesting fact that I had forgotten is that at this point, uh, we had established on our first part or that Lex was the president of the United States at this current time in mm-hmm. DC. And, uh, Talia Ghoul had actually took over LexCorp. I totally forgot that. Yeah, I did too. And I just kind of rereading it. I don't remember. Do you re- do you remember why her name is Talia Head? I don't know, unless it's something referring to like the head of the demon, like the demon's head, maybe. Is it some kind of double in you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she is quite attractive. This is, this is Batman's own internal narration. Yeah, they did father a child together. Maybe that's so. how he marks uh, <laughs> women down, just to remember Talia yeah. Head. <laughs> Selena Anal. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're again they're trying to track down uh, some of that uh, the chemical ethylene. Uh, there, sh- she kind of asks him um, if he's trying to uh, raise some of the Aztec gilia, which is the plant that they're trying to track down that. Ivy was growing in Gotham. She right. had transplants to Metropolis. But yes, LexCorp is a, a big supplier of that chemical ethylene. So we see uh, Catwoman uh, riding on top of a train. Uh, she makes a comment, does it ever get dark in this city? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I like uh, it just when, when nightfall comes, it just lights up, you know, from all the, the lighting like coming on throughout the city, which is, again, I like how it's contrasted against Gotham City, which you would think is a dark, dreary kind of gothic type city where Metropolis is this big, bustling, bright kind of hub of culture and right. all that kind of stuff. I really like the panels here. I really like Batman kind of dropping down onto the uh, onto the train, kind of shadowed look, you know, shadowed eyes and things like that. Again, I think Jim is like really starting to get into like his Batman. Yeah, he's definitely got it by now. He's yeah. getting it down. We're getting four issues in. He's not as he's not as boxy and bulky. He's mm-hmm. definitely more leaner, but still muscular, like fitting right into that vein for me of like my idealized version of a Batman, I guess you would say. We see Batman is still, he's still got that kiss on his mind. Yeah, I really like that, just, just that single page of him on top of that train, and he's just like, in a terrier, is just like, Catwoman. Yep. She's all up in that brain. I kissed her, <laughs> he says, I kissed her, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, Catwoman actually makes her way over to, into the building where Ivy's hold up. Uh, you know, they have a little bit of a tussle. Yeah, Catwoman's pretending to still be under her, her control. Yeah. Poison Ivy sees her through that. She she knows when someone is pretending, she says, right. just smacks her away. Uh, their battle continues. Uh, Ivy actually d- controls one of her vines, you know, gets Catwoman around the neck to choke her out. Uh, Batman shows up cutting that vine with a batarang. Yeah, again, like we talked about, I think it was in issue 16. I mentioned I really liked a panel where Batman is kind of like firing his grapple hook off panel, like out of panel. I really like the panel here where Batman is like kind of retrieving the batarang. It's kind of yeah. like boomerang back to him. Like I think that's like a, just an awesome looking panel for me. It is. Like, uh, you know, the action here never had a problem. But I mean, I don't have a problem with any of the art really. There's not been anything that's come up that I've been like – that's a little sus yeah. or anything. Like all the art here is is like kind of top of the game stuff, even though, you know, Jim himself kind of admitted, you know, he wasn't quite there with some of the designs. But I mean, as far as like what you're seeing on the page here, I think it still holds up as top tier Batman stuff to oh, this yeah. to this day for me. So uh, at this point, Poison Ivy's pretty much toast. Uh, you know, uh, Catwoman <laughs> and Batman's got the drop on her. She's coming back to Gotham. However, however, she's got someone else. Yeah, on her side, uh, yes. we start seeing these big boom cracks. We see the buildings start to crumble around them. Uh, at one point, we see red eyes silhouetted as the entire side of the building kind of comes apart. And 
of course, who we find out is under Ivy's control, but none other than the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Superman. Batman remarks to himself, not him. And uh, Ivy says, if you come, uh, well, Superman actually says, if you come near her, you'll have to come through me. She says, he heard the man, my Superman. And that is how we end issue 611. Uh, Todd, we just, we did it last week. So just brief thoughts on issue 611 here. What do you think? Uh, definitely. I think we're picking up the pace here. Uh, you know, we introduced, we're going to Metropolis. So, you know, you're going to run into Superman. Yeah. We're seeing, uh, the designs for, you know, Perry White, Lois Lane. We're seeing his Superman design. You know, uh, we're, we're, again, this was designed as kind of a, for Jim Lee to really kind of, you know, kind of show his muscles artistically and like what better character to kind of bring in to let him do that other than Superman right. as well, which we'll talk about how you feel about the design of Superman and things like that in issue uh, 612. But another solid entry. Like yeah. You're getting to see um, it's progressing the story somewhat. We're not, we're not too focused on Hush. Like we're, we're progressing the story in terms of like finding Ivy, which is hopefully going to lead us to who, how she is in this mysterious figure, which mm-hmm. Batman doesn't even at this point he has no clue who's pulling the strings. Yeah, he has on no any, idea on any of this stuff. So I guess it's time. Let's go ahead and uh, pick up with our next issue, Todd. That's issue number six twelve, and that is the battle. The battle. So we pick right back up in that uh, the abandoned or broken down warehouse. Superman just tore apart. Uh, you know, Ivy still got her clutches around Superman. Uh, Catwoman's like, please tell me you have a plan. <laughs> yeah, Batman says, if I know him and I do, I know what his next move will be. We see Superman, of course, just blasting away with heat vision. Right. Uh, some good panel work here. I like Batman kind of like tackling Catwoman, getting her out of the way. I really like the, uh, I don't know, it's almost kind of uh, the, the, the panel with Poison Ivy kind of screaming they're getting away. Uh, just the way her eyes look, it's almost like a, Kind of an alien feel to it, yeah. Which kind of like makes sense since she's um, a character that's meant to be a little bit more than human. Like I just really kind of like the way her eyes are kind of framed and kind of designed and drawn there. Like I think it's a, a nice little touch. Yeah, we see uh, Batman kind of uh, he grabs Catwoman and he kind of takes her underwater. He kind of puts in a little rebreather. That's their getaway. Uh, I like he has like here he has night vision and also he's got like. Uh, Propeller boots? What what would you yeah, call these? I guess propulsion boots. Propulsion yeah. boots. Like, uh, but I really just like uh, that's one of the things. Again, like some of my favorite panels in this entire series is when we see how Jim Lee kind of depicts Batman's tech that he uses, and like mm-hmm. it all it all works for me. Like I like the designs of like you know the rebreather here. You know we we cut to Batman's eyes kind of going green for the night vision when it's enabled. The look of his boots. We talked before, like in part one, about just the detail Jim Lee goes into. If you just look at the panel of the the boot, Look how detailed the boots are just in this one little small panel, you know, so like all that stuff is great. And then like the the kind of half page panel here, Batman just kind of whooshing through the water with Catwoman, Mm -hmm. like it's all great stuff. So we pick back up. Uh, Ivy's left there with Superman. Uh, Superman says, you know, I can't kill. She's like, you already have my plants or my (laughs) children. You tore this whole warehouse down around them. Yeah, we uh, see definitely the idea of Superman that he's uh, he's definitely trying to fight the control of Ivy. He's not fully under her spell at this point, so we kind of see that he's still trying to, to resist. So we kind of see that Batman has led Catwoman to like the underground, uh, underneath Lex Corp, where I, obviously Lex had all that lead lined, uh, you know, knowing Superman can't see through lead. <laughs> so he's trying to buy him a little bit of time. <laughs> right, exactly. And here we kind of get, you know, he's talking to Oracle, they're in position. Uh, he's kind of trying to set up up um, things here. He, he mentions that the parasite once fought him here and used these tunnels to kind of escape. So it's kind of a, an escape, but Batman knows Superman's coming at some point. So uh, we see him kind of go to his belt. Uh, he says that he's the best at what he does. As we see, he removes from his belt a kryptonite ring right. given to him by Superman at this point in the comments. Uh, she, Catwoman says that's open to the debate, and I love the panel. He says, uh, "I said he's the best at what he does," and then we go to the panel. And says, "Not at what I do." Yes, and he's got the uh, the kryptonite ring on. That's kind of our opening page for introducing uh, ch- Chapter Five, the battle. Uh, just really love that panel. Just like solid, solid like design. Like I just the feathering here, like all of it. Catwoman's look of like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, uh, it's doing something for Catwoman there. Right. I would say. Uh, so we see Batman is kind of setting up some bombs around underneath there. Uh, they share another kiss. Uh, 
Batman says, why did you do that? She's like, well, you not, might not be able to later. <laughs> yeah. After Superman gets through with it. Because immediately we start seeing the thum, thum, thum. Superman has showed up. He's found them. Yeah. He crashes through the side. Uh, just a great panel here. So here's where, let, let me pause here and let me just ask you, like, what do you think about Jim Lee's Superman design, Todd? I think it's equally as good as his Batman. I think it's awesome. Yeah, uh, there would be a follow-up that Jim Lee would do, not a follow-up to this, but just a, a Superman story in general for tomorrow that he would do after this that I haven't read in quite a few years, but I was never as big of a fan of the story of that book as yeah, it I was, was a lesser art. story, yeah. But, uh, I mean, as far as uh, it goes, like I think, I think you're right. Like the Superman, for me, is like as good uh as the batman design here like i'm completely and absolutely fine with it. there's nothing really i would change um one one thing later i kind of did notice you know batman and superman they're both muscular dark haired gentlemen uh batman outside of the cow compared to superman they look very much identical very similar they, they have very similar faces gotcha. it's just the, the way jim lee kind of styles the hair a little bit more variance in that would be nice but uh, that's that's me you know, picking the smallest of nits here, Todd. Uh, the next panel is also great. I assume this is like a two-page spread here. Batman just cracking Superman across the face. With that kryptonite ring. Yes. Yeah. And I love the little detail that Superman has these little vines still wrapped around him, like mm -hmm. the little the plants, just yeah. kind of signaling that this is, he's still well under the control of uh, Ivy, even though he's kind of fighting back against that, I would say. So during the battle, uh, Batman kind of drops this knowledge that, you know, hey, I've opened up a gas main down here. <laughs> right. If you even think about firing up that heat vision, you're going to blow up this entire block. <laughs> uh, he's, like, trying to distract him as well. He's, like, listen to me. He's, like, punching him. He tells him about the gas the gas main that he's opened up. I love that Batman kind of kind of his internal narration says, if I hit him again, I'll shatter every bone in my hand. The Kevlar only protects so much. Even though he's got the kryptonite ring, I mean, he's still – he can't go one on one with Superman. Right. It says it slows his reflexes, but he can't go one on one with him. So he uh, switches to hypersonics. Uh, we see Superman kind of uh, uses his uh, Arctic breath, is what it's referred to as, his freeze breath here to kind of freeze Batman's hand, uh, his ring hand. Uh, he, Batman says he has to keep the pressure on. So next thing he tries to do is blind him. And while he's kind of blinded, he fires his grapple hook uh, to try to get away uh, and try to get up from behind and uh, get up to the surface. Uh, meanwhile, uh, what has Catwoman been doing this whole time, Todd? So uh, Batman had kind of sent her off on a little side mission, and he's like, you know, any one of the three will be fine. But she's like, I better get the lady. If I get the girl, that's a definite. That's definite. <laughs> right. So he's going after one of what we'll call the Superman family. And, of mm. course, Catwoman goes after the biggest one of all, and that's Lois. Exactly. Superman comes flying to the surface and says, you hurt me. This ends now. Batman tells him to look up. And he says, you can save her or fight me. It's your choice, not Poison Ivy's. Batman's wanting Clark to uh, to be the Boy Scout that he knows that he is. Right. To not let an innocent person die, especially Lois Lane. Lois Lane. <laughs> and we kind of look up and we see that uh, Catwoman's kind of uh, holding Lois kind of out on like a, almost like a flagpole, I it's guess. It's like a flagpole, yeah. Kind of attached to the building. Lois is kind of like struggling. And I just love the kind of the transition for the one panel to like, you know, it's like let go of me. And she's like <laughs> falling there. Uh, nice little cleavage shot there, Jim. Yeah. As you can see, as she's falling towards the ground. Uh, Batman's internally uh, internalizing that if we had to, Catwoman could catch her. But you see that red streak yeah. going through the sky, and it's none other than Superman because he, there's no way that he's going to let Lois fall no to the way. ground. She could be anywhere on Earth at any point falling, and he's going to be there to oh, catch yeah. her, Todd. We've seen that how many times in media I, I, and films I can't, throughout can't the year? can't even count right now, man. Exactly. <laughs> So, uh, of course, Superman saves Lois. Uh, they have a little uh, rooftop Daily Planet uh, meeting. Uh, you know, Clark and uh, Clark and Superman kind of, you know, have their little uh, back and forth. And, you know, they kind of realize that, you know, they have, still have to track down Ivy. And, you know, Batman's kind of like, well, you know, I think there may be a quicker way to do this. And, like, Superman's like, yeah, I think I have a change of clothes up at the fortress. <laughs> and I, I had forgot. I'm like, why are they going to the fortress? And then I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one other thing to note here, Batman also mentions that uh, someone uh, had supplied Poison Ivy with synthetic green kryptonite right. that had in her lipstick that helped her kind of control Superman. But, yeah, why do they end up going to the fortress, Todd? I like that little part to where you like Batman clicks that final little thing oh, yeah. with Ivy leaf off of him. Like, come here a minute, Soupy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
So they actually, you see Ivy sitting like in a little, I guess it's like a little hotel room, some yeah. kind of hideout. And uh, Metropolis they, they, Plaza. Yeah, they tracked her down quick, and they tracked her down so quick because they went up there and enlisted the aid of old Crypto the Super Dog. <laughs> super Dog. <laughs> we see him, I guess he's coming off of an elevator or coming through a doorway. It looks like, I guess, a doorway. Yeah. She's trying to, Poison Ivy's trying to escape. She opens the door to find nothing, none other than Crypto the Super Dog here. Yeah, I and, really like that line where it's like, sometimes all the detective work in the world, you can't beat a super dog with a keen sense of smell. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Crypto kind of forces her to kind of retreat back where she turns around to uh, Catwoman saying, hello, Ivy. She says, goodbye, Ivy. And then, Doc Dexter. Right in the face. Uh, Superman asks, Catwoman, was that really necessary? Her and Batman kind of have a, a look at each other. And they, they both say yes at the it, same yes, time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, our, uh, we go back to here. Uh, we have a little panel with uh, Catwoman saying, so don't even think about it, dog. He's uh, trying to lick Catwoman, I guess. And then Superman's kind of inquiring to Batman about how did Catwoman know to pick Lois, kind of uh, asking Bruce if he tell her his secret. And yeah. uh, uh, your Catwoman's kind of, he didn't tell her the secret. Catwoman's kind of studied Superman as anyone else. If you study Superman long enough, you know that he's protecting anyone at the Daily Planet, which is another reason anyone could probably figure out who Superman is with enough time right. and enough study. But yes, uh, Catwoman picked Lois all on her own. Uh, just some really great panels here. Just Batman kind of kneeling on the rooftop, Superman behind him, like with his Boy Scout pose. Like it's all just, just terrific stuff. Nice stuff. Uh, Clark says you could have gotten Lois killed. Batman says, no, I believed in you. Um, Superman remarks about all the good work that they've done, including the JLA and how long has it been? Batman says, why? And uh, they're just kind of like, they have that good kind of uh, repartee back and forth. You know, they always calls him, the, he calls him always the detective. Batman says, always the boy scout, those kind of things. And they have a, they have a thank you. And Batman says, uh, they have a handshake and a thank you. And Batman says, what more, what are friends for after Superman talks about giving the ring to the right person? And then who's on the rooftop, Todd? Why, it's old bandaged hush. And then in his hushed voice, he says, what are friends for? And then we see him kind of peering at both of them with through binoculars, laughing, maybe. Ha, laughing. Ha, 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 ha. We hadn't really seen that for the character before. Right. And we get a tease of next up Harley Quinn. So that might lead us down to uh, appearance by the Joker. Perhaps, maybe. Um, here we go. Quick thoughts about issue 612, Todd. Uh, probably, I would say, my favorite issue so far. Yeah, I would agree. This has always been a standout issue to me. Like when I go back and reread this, I'm always looking forward to 612 just because seeing Superman, you get some good like Batman, Superman action, like some great panels, like a good, a little fight between them, but it's not like a end of the world, massive stakes fight. Like it's not a kind of the level, the same level as like a Dark Knight Returns or anything like that, but still like a good little fight. Again, you get Jim Lee kind of exercising his artistic muscles, getting to kind of see, you know, how his he would design some of the Superman family and those kind of stuff. Like, I think it's, again, always been a standout issue to me. It's been one of my favorites and one of the, I always like to come back to when I'm going to, I know I'm going to reread this series. Yeah, and uh, just one thing for me, and I know people have had kind of issues with this down through the years, but, you know, for years in DC continuity, uh, Batman and Superman, I mean, they were like the best of friends, you know, mm. chums, <laughs> you know, right. bo bosom buddies, lifelong pals, you right. know, and, you know, kind of post-crisis on Infinite and Earth, that changed, you know, the dynamic was more of, they had maybe a working, good working relationship, they would consider each other friends, but, you know, Superman always didn't approve of Batman's methods, mm. and Batman, you know, maybe always wasn't really that trusting of somebody with that much power like Superman. Right. I, I always like that dynamic. I yeah. like the dynamic of them being, you know, a good working relationship, a friend in need if a friend was needed, but they wouldn't like, oh, buddy. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then also not to the, like, the point where he's like trying to kill him with a spear and stops because they have the same name. And right. The same yeah. Mom's yeah. Name. <laughs> exactly. Not to that extent not either. Not to that extent. Somewhere yeah. in the middle between Somewhere old middle. chum and why did you say that name? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I got you. And I, I would agree with you. I, I would, uh, if I would, if I would have to kind of, you know, pick my idealized version of their relationship, I think it's something more about what you're talking about. Yeah. Because they, they uh, you know, they may not approve of each other for different reasons, but they, they can, they can get along well enough to, to, to do the job and get the job done. Yes. And I think they both know that if push comes to shove, that one or the other's got each other's back. Exactly. So. And what more, more true friend could you ask for? <laughs> <laughs> so Todd, let's talk about part six, the opera. 
So we pick back up. Uh, we have returned to Gotham. Uh, we're outside of an opera house. Bruce is getting ready to attend. Yeah, he's outside with Alfred. Alfred uh, tells him he's kind of packed his belongings. Mean he's packed his bat suit. He tells him, do try to make it at least until the intermission before you have to turn into uh, the bat. Uh, we see that Bruce is going to be accompanied that night by uh, Tommy Elliott. Also, his uh, his date for the evening, so to speak, is Selena Kyle. Uh, and she's accompanied by who, Todd? Uh, Dr. Leslie Tompkins. Dr. Leslie Tompkins, longtime confidant of uh, Bruce Wayne, the Batman. Uh, we kind of see them taking their, uh, their seats in the opera box. Tommy's kind of uh, coordinating everything, making sure everyone's it's boy, girl, boy, girl, right. Bruce, Selena, Leslie, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, it should be noted here too. I think it's noted by, um, I think Bruce that, uh, he obviously knows that Selena is Catwoman, but Catwoman, uh, Selena doesn't, doesn't yeah. know Bruce is Batman right. at this point in the book. So we kind of pick up, uh, the performance is starting down on stage. We see a, a clown actor begin to sing, but, uh, He's got a big mallet, and one of the lines he sings is, I've run out of Rice Krispies, yeah. so something ain't <laughs> quite right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Selena remarks about Bruce, those lyrics, and Bruce says, yes, I know, it's an odd performance. We see someone kind of ripping out of their clown costume on stage, and then our, uh, our chapter reveal here is a Harley Quinn pointing a gun saying, opera schmopera, Todd. <laughs> uh, I do kind of like the uh, the design of her her uh, her goons here. We kind of see a little uh, at the bottom of her panel, they have like, uh, you know, they're kind of getting their weapons out of their uh, instrument cases. Right. I guess they were pretending party be part of the orchestra, and they have this. It, it, it's kind of like almost at first you think they're two faced goons, but yeah. um, I do kind of they they kind of follow her color scheme basically, kind of the red yeah. and kind of the black. Yeah. But I do kind of enjoy the designs there. But what happens from there, Todd? So uh, Harley is there just to pull a big heist. Uh, she's there to relieve all these people of the good hard earned cash, jewels, everything they got of value. <laughs> uh, Tommy says this is outrageous. He's going to call the police, and that leads. Uh, Harley to kind of do some somersaults up to their opera box, kick the phone right out of his hand. Uh, and she's, uh, she kind of remarks, if it ain't zillionaire Bruce Wayne. <laughs> it's at this point where I'm reading these books as well. It should be mentioned, you know, um, still to this day, I kind of hear Kevin Conroy's voice. Uh, when right. I'm reading these books, definitely when I'm reading Harley, I'm still hearing Arlene Sorkin exactly. when I'm reading these books yep. as well. So just something I wanted to kind of throw in there. She ends up taking a uh, earring of Selena's, a, a cat-themed earring. Uh, Leslie kind of tells her to take whatever you want. She kind of pins Tommy down on the ground, puts a gun under his neck, and then uh, starts going for something around his neck. What do we got there? It's Todd? like a, a green-looking uh, ring-looking type a necklace yeah, pendant. I think it's a, a jade pendant. Mm -hmm. We kind of get uh, a flashback to, again, Bruce and Tommy as kids and that kind of Jim Lee watercolor kind of painter-y style. Bruce uh, steals it from him, tells him it looks like a lifesaver. He's going <laughs> right. to swallow it. Tommy tells him to give it back. He kind of uh, takes Bruce down on the ground and is, is going to end up punching him. Yeah. Bruce tells him to take it. So we see it's a, it's a very important to Tommy. It was a jade pendant that was given to him by his mother. Right. So uh, it's something that's very near and kind of dear to Tommy's heart. And uh, our Harley actually rips it off of his neck. Uh, we then kind of get a little flashback to some of Bruce's memories. Yeah, I like the narration here. No, I know something of a mother's things. We see, we see kind of Harley ripping that from his neck as we see the pearls kind of being ripped from the neck of Martha Wayne. Uh, just kind of all this kind of uh, juxtaposed against uh, the death of Bruce's own parents and kind of the taking uh, of uh, his mother and his father's things that led to their ultimate death, I right. guess you would say. So Harley uh, somersaults back out of their box, uh, starts <laughs> laying down some cover fire as she's trying to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, we see uh, her and her goons are kind of laying down cover fire. Selena's trying to to make sure that Leslie's okay. Uh, we see her uh, kind of remark to Tommy, uh, tell him to kind of get down, you idiot. He says, I know what I'm doing. He's kind of like scuttling out of the box to try mm -hmm. to presumably go get his necklace back because he says no one takes from me, no one. Uh, Selena's kind of, uh, worried about Leslie. She tells them that, uh, she needs to kind of, uh, find that something in her little back purse that she brought, uh, to, to, uh, kind of, uh, make sure no one gets hurt. Yep. So, so we kind of get the knowledge here that Leslie knows Selena is Catwoman. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in our next kind of, uh, I guess this is a, is this a two page spread? This would have to be a two pager. Yeah. Uh, we see kind of Batman kind of descending in kind of, uh, Harley's kind of blasting away, kind of blasting four uh, bullet holes through his, uh, through his cape here. One thing I wanted to kind of point out, if you look, Right under the uh, kind of muzzle flash of Harley's, mm -hmm. there's someone sitting right underneath that muzzle flash, Todd. If you can zoom in there. Why is that? 
Is that Wolverine? That is Wolverine. <laughs> yes, that is from uh, way back in the day. It was I don't know where I read it or where I seen it. It was one of those things like if you looked on forums, you know, uh, yeah. like just little hidden things. There's another one coming up in a few issues that we'll point out. But there was just a little like a little Easter egg that it was supposed to be. You know, Jim Lee obviously was kind of made famous by his run on uh, X Men. Yeah. So there's a little Logan snuck in right nice. under the muzzle flash, uh, Harley's muzzle flash of her weapons. So I just kind of wanted to point that out in that two-page spread yeah. and not to linger but this is an awesome two-page spread uh if you're wondering if jim lee has found his batman yet looky right here yeah, I, I think <laughs> i think the answer is, yeah. is yes uh, i love the next uh, kind of panels we get though again like one of my favorite things is seeing like how uh, jim lee kind of interprets the tech and just these kind of little capsules kind of batman is, is throwing like uh i think he's like you know he says he's kind of using everything mace smoke flash grenades batarangs we see later on there's a panel where there's like a guy with a couple batarangs in his neck right some in his hands like it's just all like you know really really good stuff so uh batman dispatches of those goons uh he's going after harley uh she actually fires up into the rafters and uh, a sandbag falls down and hits bats right on top of the head yes but what is he not wearing he should have had on yes uh <laughs> ever since he uh he took that spill in the crime alley he's been wearing a cow with uh, kevlar reinforcement to protect his skull from his recent surgery he says but tonight he insisted he'd be fine without it despite alfred's concerns and tonight's tonight of course you take a, a sandbag to the back sandbag of the to the head. dome <laughs> to the back of the head so uh you see the little panel he's kind of a little starry you know seeing stars there a little bit i like how it's kind of uh inferred that he's kind of like dizzy a little right. bit like i like how that's uh kind of signaled artistically here uh and then we kind of see harvey she's got the uh, harvey harley she's got the uh the gun to his head and uh she's uh she's kind of remarking about how maybe she should go off book and blow her, his brains out. Mm -hmm. Batman's kind of been remarking through this fight that this is again. This seems off for Harley. This seems yeah. to be. This is too big right. of a, a job to pull for Harley. This is not her mo. Similar to Killer Croc, him kidnapping a, a rich kid, not his mo. Harley pulling this, and then now she's talking about going off book. So we get a little bit of something here that maybe these villains are following somebody's orders. Exactly. Exactly. And then. Uh, we see Catwoman kind of come in to save the day. She says uh, of Harley's performance, badly acted, badly staged, and the audience actually wants their money back. <laughs> uh, we see their little uh, kind of fight. You want to take us through that, Todd? So they're having a little bit of a tussle. Uh, we see some more of these uh, great somersaults from both uh, Catwoman and Harley, kind of mm -hmm. done in silhouette in the panels almost. Mm -hmm. Uh, Harley's firing at Catwoman. Catwoman's leaping at her. Uh, the audience somehow thinks this is all part of the show as uh, Batman catches Catwoman as she falls back down into his arms. Exactly. <laughs> there's a there's another little panel that I really like during the Catwoman and Harley fight. There's a there's a part where Catwoman uh, scratches off one of Car uh, Harley's. Oh, one of her, yeah, her yeah, ears. Her yeah. ears there. And uh, she says, hey, if you don't want the part, don't play the part, Cat Lady. Like, I just I just love that like, she just kind of scratches that right off yeah. the side of her uh, her her costume there but yeah the, the the audience is completely into it they think it's all part of the show like you said this is batman catches Catwoman. uh he tells her to lie still you need medical attention she says i know that come closer if you ever choose to rescue me again over catching the bad guy I square i'll scratch your eyes out <laughs> i'm not some kid you took in and train she kind of trails off yeah, bass, as passes she passes out, out as leslie kind of comes over to kind of tend to her it's kind of your fault, Leslie. You you pushed her to this. You're the reason she got shot. Uh, pick us up from here, Todd. So Harley's trying to make her escape uh, and backstage. Uh, we see Tommy kind of comes out of nowhere, gets the drop on her. He gets a kick in the gut for his uh, efforts. <laughs> yeah, she uh, he he wants his necklace back, and I love that Harley tells him that. And people in hell want ice water too, as well. Actually, she gets it backward, and people in ice water want hell. I was going to ask you that. I'm like, yeah. did am I reading a misprinted digital copy? No, or is no, that the no. way she said it? No, that's okay. the way she said it. She says okay. that people in ice water won't have. Just, <laughs> just some of that, uh, that Harley's Harley, mind, Yeah, folks. exactly, Harley stuff. She kind of, again, somersaults off. He tells her to give it back. Batman comes along a few moments later to find Selena's ring, uh, her earring, and then uh, 
find out that Harley came this way, he kind of kicks open in the door in another great panel I like with the lightning kind of striking behind it. And then we hear a gunshot. And I love the way that panel looks, just that like kind of that shock surprise. He just looks up like, oh, no. Yeah, that, that look on his face. Batman kind of runs around the corner. He screams no, brain dripping down his face like another awesome panel. Just mm-hmm. looks completely pissed. And who do we see in our last panel here, Todd? We see the Joker holding that famous uh, bang gun and Tommy Elliott laying underneath him with a gunshot wound. And the Joker says, now that's how you make an entrance. And this is the uh, this is where uh, issue six thirteen ends, Todd. Yeah. So here you go. Here's a really big development in the Hush storyline because here you are, six issues in. We're halfway through this story, and halfway through this story, most of anybody that's reading this book back in the day or for the first time ever is thinking Tommy Elliott's obviously hush. Obviously hush. And now he's laying dead in the alley at the hands of the Joker. Right. So what does this mean? for the identity of who is Hush and what uh, what is going to be to come in issue 614, which we'll be covering a week from now, Todd. I know, because <laughs> when I read this, I was like, this page, and I'm like, holy shit, we're only reading these three at a time. And fuck no! <laughs> I have to go on. It's a, it's a good... Because you've good got team. me now. I know, right? If yeah. I wouldn't got before, you've got me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely uh, you're definitely hooked in. Like, uh, you're, again, this is... Uh, we're in the midsection. We're right slap in the middle of this story, and we're really starting to kind of pick up momentum towards the end now. 614, definitely definitely kind of starts to uh, rapidly kind of push forward the story here. But, yeah, it's a it's a kind of it was a shocking thing even back in the day because, you you know, Tommy Elliott's hush. You're like, I know this guy. He's got to be. He's got to be hush. He's never been introduced before. He's brand new to this. There's a brand new villain that's got his face covered. It's got to be this guy. Right. And now he's fucking dead. <laughs> so I don't know who hush is. Right. And the Joker's back and Batman is pissed. And but, here we go. Yes, we'll have to find out next week, Todd, what happens. Oh, again. God, can I wait? Probably not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so a few questions, uh, same kind of questions I asked you last week, Todd. So do these three issues still hold up for you? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, when you've got me here and I want to keep on going, you've still got me. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think they're just as strong as ever. Again, 612 was always a standout to me. 611 kind of bridges that gap. 612 is a good kind of Batman, Superman kind of issue, kind of seeing that the, the dynamic of their relationship and kind of getting a little little tussle between Batman and Superman, moving the story along slightly. But 613 really starts to move the, the back into the mystery because here, right. here's where we are. It's also now like who is Hush? We thought we had our, our culprit here, but now he's lying dead in the alley the joker's now on the scene the most famous batman villain of all what's going to happen as we go forward here uh anything you would change about these last three issues uh honestly i can't think of a thing (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean the art is strong there's not really anything that i would uh make a major change to at all again we talked about we kind of i kind of heard criticism of the paneling and stuff like that i'm not uh such a deep comic book um like uh you know uh, critic to say that the paneling is bad for me. There's nothing that distracted me in these issues. It was no. perfectly fine and, and readable and easy to follow along with for me. Uh, of our three covers, Batman 611, where we kind of have a silhouetted Batman kind of uh, spreading his cape behind Catwoman, 612 Batman uh, being held by the throat by Superman, or 613, which is Batman holding a uh, hurt Catwoman with Harley in the back on like a kind of an opera poster. Those three issues, which has the best cover time? I got to go 612 Batman Superman all yeah. day. <laughs> all day. That's one of the, the my favorite covers in the entire run. Uh, I should also mention, uh, we kind of mentioned it last week, but there was also a sketch variant of right. that Batman number 612, uh, which I, I have as well. Again, it's just kind of iconic at this point. It like, is. It's a really good tease for that th- that book. It really kind of sums things up. And, uh, I mean, uh, it, it's definitely, without a doubt, the, the better of the three. All of them are kind of, I think these 611 and 613, I would, like, rate them lower overall than some of the covers we'll have coming up. Right. They're probably towards the bottom, but there's not a, a bad one in there. But no. 612 definitely takes it. So uh, next week we'll jump in uh, back in for a uh, hush part three. We'll be giving our final review uh, scores at uh, uh, the entire story in part four. So until then, Todd, you want to tell everyone how they can find us and get in touch with us on social media. We're at Tau Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tau Capes podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at Tau Capes pod at gmail.com. 
Uh, if you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Tile Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.